Hi, I'm Alina Wong, and welcome to Discovering China, NCD's weekly documentary show on traditional Chinese culture. Coming up this week, the story of Yue Fei, a Chinese general known for his loyalty, China's northern and southern dynasties period, and beef noodles in Taiwan. First up this week, Margaret Tri brings you the legendary story of one of ancient China's most honored military generals, Yue Fei from the Song Dynasty. Today, General Yue Fei's name epitomizes traditional Chinese values of patriotism to one's country and filial piety towards one's parents. The legend of the Chinese military general Yue Fei is one of enduring loyalty and patriotism. Yue Fei was remembered for his military successes, loyalty towards his country, and filial piety for his elderly mother. Yue Fei was born in 1103 AD, towards the end of the Northern Song Dynasty, from parents who were humble farmers in what is today's Henan province. As Yue Fei was growing up, China was constantly attacked from the north by the fierce Jurchen army. During this time, the Southern Song Imperial Court urgently tried to enlist soldiers to defend the country. Yang Yuefei was torn between going to fight for his country and staying home to care for his elderly mother. One story has it that Yuefei's mother encouraged her son to embrace the honor of defending his country. She asked him to take off his shirt and then tattooed four Chinese characters on his back, Jing Zhong Bao Guo. It means to serve the country with loyalty. After the Jurchens invaded the northern Song capital of Kaifeng and captured the emperor in 1127 AD, the emperor's younger brother escaped to establish the southern Song dynasty. General Yue Fei became a symbol of hope during these difficult times. It was believed that once he laid only 500 men and defeated the 100,000 Jurchen army, forcing the enemy to retreat. Yue Fei was not only known for his courage and bravery, he was a man with lofty moral principles. He cared for his soldiers and personally attended to them when they were ill. He helped their families when they died in combat. But he was also strict with them and forbade them from plundering civilians in the towns they passed through. Yue Fei was also remembered for his benevolence towards ordinary citizens. After suppressing a revolt soon after the founding of the Southern Song Dynasty, Yue Fei pleaded with Emperor Gao Zhong to spare the lives of the ordinary people in the town. He eventually convinced the emperor to only execute those who had started the revolt. The story has it that Emperor Gao Zhong presented Yue Fei with a banner to honor his loyalty to the throne and to the welfare of the people. But Yue Fei's military achievements made some corrupt palace officials jealous of him. They poisoned Emperor Gao Zhong against him. Yue Fei was thus recalled to the palace and stripped of his military duties. A year later, in 1142 AD, Minister Qing Hui sentenced Yue Fei to death on false charges. Yue Fei was only 39 years old at the time of his death. The public mourned for the death of the hero and despised Qing Hui. According to historical texts, 21 years after his death, Emperor Xiao Zhong acquitted Yue Fei and reinstated him as the loyal general. For their role in Yue Fei's death, iron statues of Qing Hui, his wife and two other palace officials were made to kneel in front of Yue Fei's tomb. The northern and southern dynasties period saw a divided China, ruled by rivaling clans. Despite the political chaos, the period still saw rich cultural developments, leading to the construction of Buddha statues that are today's World Heritage Sites. The northern and southern dynasties period stretched from 420 to 589 AD. It was a period of division, as different generals gained control of various parts of China, but they only ruled for a few decades and didn't manage to pass on power to their heirs. After the Three Kingdoms period, the Western and Eastern Jin dynasties followed. Then, in the year 420, a warlord named Liu Yu toppled the emperor and established a series of southern dynasties. Over the next 150 years, power in southern China kept changing hands between three families. 
In the north, non-Chinese ethnic groups established their own kingdoms. Mongolian tribes established the Northern Wei dynasty, lasting for almost 100 years. Despite much of China being governed by minority or non-Chinese ethnic groups, they quickly adopted Chinese culture. Emperor Xiao Wen of the Northern Wei dynasty ordered his citizens to take Chinese surnames, wear Chinese-style clothing and speak Chinese, and even marry into local Chinese families. Buddhism spread rapidly in China during this period. The Yungang grottos of Shanxi province were constructed under the rule of the Northern Wei. The caves contain over 51,000 Buddha statues. Earlier statues looked like non-Chinese, with deeper eyes and higher noses, while later ones have more ethnic Chinese characteristics, as a result of Emperor Xiao Wen's assimilation measures. The caves are now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. During the 6th century, the Indian monk Bodhidharma, or Da Mo in Chinese, traveled to China. Emperor Wu Di of the Southern Liang Dynasty received him. Da Mo then headed north and was said to have glided across the Yangtze River on a single reed stalk before settling at the Shaolin Temple. Da Mo introduced Zen Buddhism to China. In the years that followed, Buddhism continued to flourish. History seems to repeat itself. The Warring States period set the stage for the short-lived Qin, which was followed by the more stable Han Dynasty. 800 years later, the Three Kingdoms, Jin, Northern and Southern Dynasties, were followed briefly by the Sui Dynasty, and then the glorious Tang, China's Golden Age. We now go to Taiwan to sample some of Taipei's famous beef noodles at the 8th Taipei International Beef Noodle Festival. <laughs> How tasty are Taipei's famous beef noodles? So tasty that Taipei Mayor Hao Long Bin has even personally come out to promote them. When people from other places come to Taipei, they definitely need to try Taipei's beef noodles. Taipei's beef noodles are not only tasty and famous, but there are also many types. Each restaurant has its own character, and every restaurant makes them very well. The Taipei International Beef Noodle Festival has been held for the past eight years. It has popularized many different types of beef noodles. The festival not only brings out the best flavors in the city, but also stimulates the local economy. In 2008, because of hard work and promotion, our revenue was around 26 million US dollars. In 2009, it was almost 30 million. Then in 2010, it went up to 34 million, and now it's even higher. As part of the festival, a beef noodle king contest is being held. Chefs specializing in various styles of beef noodles come out to show their skills. Some of their dishes break away from the traditions. You have a French-style cappuccino. The main ingredient is noodles, and then you have beetroot. But the noodles are done like Italian spaghetti, peeled with a knife. When we boil the noodles, we don't add oil, but we use oil when we fry it. Then after we fry it, the oil becomes part of the soup. Different styles of cooking and unusual flavors abound to entice people's taste buds at the annual festival. Beef noodle lovers can taste varieties of the famed Taipei beef noodles for about one US dollar a bowl. Thanks for watching Discovering China. We'll be back at the same time next week. Until then, don't forget you can subscribe to our show on YouTube and like us on Facebook. See you soon.